The Weather Channel is now responding to reports that one of their reporters was essentially faking it during his coverage of Hurricane Warren. So production boats and blue water sailing. Today I want to discuss a little bit what a production boat is actually capable of and show you several examples of what they can truly do. Now oftentimes on forums, social media and on YouTube you'll hear these what is a blue water sailboat and what is it capable of, what's it meant to do. So today let's break it down, look at a few boats and you can decide for yourself what boat might work for you, what might not work for you and what it is you actually are going to be doing. Now the first boat I want to show you is a Juno Sunfast 37. Now Juno is one of the largest builders of production vessels in the world. Now the Juno Sunfast 37 was first built in 2000. She comes in with a length overall of 37.4 inches, a beam of 12 foot, and a length at the waterline of 35.2 inches with a maximum draft of right around six and a half feet. Now, if this vessel was ever brought up on a forum or something and you said you wanted to cross oceans, the instant response would always be, that's good for coastal cruising or island hopping, but it's not a blue water boat. However, I present to you Andreas. Now, he's the owner of a Genoa Sunfast 37 and he's a marine biologist. Now, for over a decade, he has been charting Arctic waters to study whales. He sailed from his hometown in Norway to the ice packs of the high Arctic to swim with, study, and document the health and well-being of these whales the largest mammals in the world. He's sailing his production boat just 600 nautical miles south of the North Pole. Now, when it comes to conditions, these are some of the harshest that you would ever encounter while sailing. And most of us would never even come close to encountering these types of conditions. Now, Andreas is up there pulling a modern day full-blown Ernest Shackleton on a production vessel built from one of the largest production vessel manufacturers in the world. It can easily be done. He didn't do a bunch of modifications to this or anything. He simply purchased it, outfitted it for long-term sailing, and off he went to encounter some of the harshest conditions on the planet, hands down, all with a bolt-on fin keel production vessel. And he's not alone. Now, I present to you Laura Decker. She's famous from the movie Maiden Trip. Now, if you're not familiar with that documentary, it's a documentary that recounts her, Laura Decker, the Dutch schoolgirl who became the youngest person to solo sail around the world in January 2012 at only the age of 16. And guess what vessel she used? She used a Genoa Sunfizz. So what's a Juno Sunfizz? Well, it's a 37 foot, six inch off the shelf production boat. These were built between 1975 and 1980 when Juno was anything but a household name in the sailboat industry. Now, more than 500 of these were built, although the boat was only sporadically pushed in the US market. It was at the time touted as something of a performance cruiser. Now, the early Juno you know, models basically had silly names, Melody, Flirt, Fantasia, Sunkiss, Jinfiz. However, fortunately, the engineers were far better than the marketing folks over at Genot. And Genots at the time were known as solid, seaworthy, and good looking boats. If you are looking to get on the water sooner than later and save money in the process, consider becoming an American Sailing Association member. In the description down below, there is a link for $10 off the ASA membership. Now, once you are an American Sailing Association member, you do get discounts to dozens and dozens of other sailing related products that will all help you get on the water sooner than later, including Precision Sales, Seato, and dozens of others. Consider joining and becoming an ASA member now. The link is in the description below. Now I could continue on and literally show you thousands of vessels and other amazing feats that production vessels are accomplishing. There is a reason why production vessels are constantly winning sailboat of the year. They are in reality fantastic vessels and you can accomplish amazing feats on them. However, in reality, that doesn't matter at all. What really matters is what type of sailing are you going to be doing and what type of conditions are you actually going to be encountering? Now, we all know of the neighbor or the crazy person around the corner that's building the bomb shelter and storing everything away for the world to come collapsing. And a lot of people do that in the world of sailing as well. Now, unfortunately, that type of mentality actually stops you from getting on the water and actually sailing. Now, I just made a video the other day about the YouTube 
tube sailing misconceptions. That's exactly that. People buying these vessels they didn't need to and spending years and years refitting these on the hard only for another life thing to happen and put off their trip longer and longer. Now my perspective is this, simply get on the water as soon as possible in the most cost efficient and time efficient manner. Personally, with the world of technology and the internet, you often just get people who have never even crossed a bathtub, let alone an ocean, just regurgitating nonsensical information over and over. They think that they need this tank to cross oceans, but the reality is that's just not true. You can cross oceans just as easily on a Beneteau 40 as you could on a so-called quote unquote blue water sailboat. Now, are we going to be out there sailing uncharted waters? No, that's not what you're going to be doing. Are you going to be sailing in hurricanes? Nope, you're not. You know why? Because technology has improved over the last several decades. These boats are more than capable of doing what 99.9% .9 of sailors are going to be doing, which is coastal cruising, island hopping, with the occasional Atlantic crossing or other ocean crossing, even a circumnavigation. All the circumnavigation of the globe is, is just longer trips strewn together. You're still only sailing for four to five weeks at a time and then stopping and you continue on your next leg of the journey. These production vessels are completely 100% capable of doing just that. Now, if you do need help getting on the water or narrowing down your boat purchase, or you just need some information and some help, consider heading on over to my website at chasinglatitudes.com. Over there, right on the homepage, you will see producer. Become a producer on the channel. With becoming a producer, you do get a one-on-one -on -one consult with me to discuss everything sailing related that you would need to, as well as you do get a year's access to our members area. Now, the members area is a fantastic place for information. We have hundreds of members over there, all in various stages of starting sailing. Some have just purchased boats, some are taking ASA classes, and so on. It is a wealth of information, and it's not a public forum. It's a private members area, so there's no harassment, there's no bullying, there's no judgment over there. It's just a great place for information to help you get on the water sooner than later later. If you would like to, you can also just send me $100 directly through PayPal. The link is in the description below for that as well. Now, if that's a little bit too much for the bank account, I completely understand. However, consider joining Patreon. For only $10 a month, you do get access again to the members area, which is a fantastic place for information to help you get on the water sooner than later. If you did enjoy the video, please leave a comment down below, like, share, all that good stuff, make it go viral, I don't know, do something. And I will see you on the next video. Thank you so, so much for joining.